This is BoomerIncomeIdeas.com and your host, Dan Farnsworth. Hey, if you're like me and believe that with the millennial generation finally moving out of their parents' homes and forming their own households, that the home improvement uh, segment is about to explode and you'd like to take advantage of that, you're going to want to uh, stay tuned to the show today. We're going to be talking with Tom Lindbergh, who is uh, CEO of Sir Grout Franchise, LLC, and he's got a niche market that uh, we're going to check out. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining me today. Great, Dan. Great to be with you. When, uh, when I came across uh, Sir Grout, uh, and before I really looked into your, your company, uh, I, I was thinking to myself, well, how does someone make a business out of grout? And then I found out that you were much more than that. So we're going to talk a lot about that. But before we do that, can we talk a little bit about your journey and how you got to uh, be the CEO of uh, Sir Grout Franchise LLC. Sure, sure. Um, Dan, I, uh, I started out uh, with a consumer products uh, background. Um, we sold uh, Prestone, uh, antifreeze, uh, glad bags, uh, consumer products. So I started off in sales and uh, made my way from sales into uh, headquarters into the marketing department. Uh, then became director of marketing um, uh, globally for our brands. So I, my background is consumer products. Um, uh, the last large company I worked with was Honeywell. I was vice president of all of our international operations around the world. And then um, I got headhunted away to become CEO of a company called Interdynamics. Um, so people were confused when I started talking about uh, the hard surface uh, industry, but uh, I was compelled to leave my corporate career because uh, my moral compass began to flicker. <laughs> and uh, I basically did not want to participate in that world anymore. I, I, I done it. I, I was successful. Um, I did well. Uh, but I was not uh, emotionally fulfilled. And um, I'm 54. Um, uh, I could have a corporate career if I wanted one, but I, I, I don't really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and I think I, that's, uh, I think that's very important to point out because that's exactly what my show is all about. It's, it's mm -hmm. the baby boomers, me, mm -hmm. you, other people just like us who had careers in, in corporate at one time. And, uh, for mm -hmm. whatever reason, we're no longer in that world, whether we chose to not be in that world or it was chosen for us. But right, right. Find, finding that that second career, finding that uh, new meaning in life, is really what's important right now. Yeah. and mm -hmm. it sounds to me like you really found that in Sir Grout. We sure did. Um, uh, lo and behold, uh, there's tile and grout uh, everywhere, uh, both residentially and commercially. Uh, it always goes bad. Um, dirty mop water soaks into what we describe as a dry sponge. Uh, people don't extract the dirty wastewater uh, when they clean their floors. Uh, of course, all of our showers are glassed in. They turn into terrariums. They start to look bad. So once we, so I sort of stumbled into this this industry and, and recognized the, the the size of it, and recognized that people were really frustrated that they could not clean it themselves, and that's because the grout is stained. Uh, like I tell people, it's like a mustard stain on your shirt, right? You, you can't, you can fade it out a little bit, but you can never remove it. Right, right. And again, when I when I first looked into this, I, I was kind of skeptical. But then when I realized that you really are in a specific niche uh, in the home improvement space, that's just mm -hmm. going to blast off. I mean, as right. as the millennial generation are starting to acquire their homes, and they're always they're acquiring older homes that they're going to fix up. And, right. and people like you and me are acquiring 
uh, income properties and things along those lines to fix up and run out. I mean, this right. I, I believe that this industry is just uh, you know on the launch pad to explode. So let's talk a little bit about specifics about what Sir Grout actually does. What you, mm -hmm. It's a hard surface refinishing company. That's right. That's right. We, we come into uh, primarily homes or primarily residential. Uh, we look at uh, kitchens, uh, hallways, uh, bathrooms, showers, anywhere where there's tile and grout uh, or natural stone for that matter. And typically, all those surfaces are maintained in, incorrectly. Uh, most people use vinegar, bleach, and ammonia. Uh, they don't extract the dirty wastewater. And all that soaks into all those materials, and eventually it just starts looking sour. Um, and people are very frustrated because no matter what they do to it, they can't um, you know, reclaim it. They, they, they can't make it look nice again. So our value proposition is quite simple. Um, we can make it look brand new or better than new. Um, and that's without any uh, construction, that's without any remodeling. So we have a set of techniques um, and processes that can renew your tile and grout and stone uh, to brand new. Um, so that's, that's what we do, and it, it, just, it just blossomed. Yeah. Uh, all of this is uh, being done through your franchising network, is that correct? That's correct. We have uh, 37 locations uh, here in the U.S., uh, excuse me, 36 locations here in the U.S. and one in Singapore. Um, we're in 17 states. Uh, we just opened up uh, Nashville, uh, Tennessee this week. So tell me a little bit about the, the profile of a typical franchisee. Is he, uh, is he mm -hmm. uh, you know, one guy in a pickup truck and a dog? Or does he have a team of people? Is he mostly going out and uh, bidding on jobs and then bringing technicians in? Or is he actually in there doing the work himself? Uh, he has a team. Um, all of our owners, uh, most of our owners um, are out in the field uh, just uh, going on sales calls. Uh, and then they have a team of technicians. They might have one van, two vans, three vans, five vans. Uh, but no, the, the owner of the company is primarily responsible for making the sales calls. And he has technicians uh, in the field. And we have quite a, quite a mix. Um, we have some... Um, uh, folks that uh, came out of retirement uh, that are uh, Sir Grout franchise owners. Uh, we have um, a couple that have uh, come out of college uh, as, a, as a first career, and then everything in between. Um, myself and a, and a handful were, were ones that you know, came out of the corporate world and decided to, uh, to have this as a second business, because it is a home-based business as well. So it, it, it uh, attracts uh, you know, quite a few people. Now, you have a, a fairly new franchisee, I guess his name is Chris McDermott, uh, that hasn't been with you that long, but he, uh, the mm -hmm. thing that I kind of uh, picked up on is he looks like us. I mean, he looks like kind of a baby <laughs> boomer that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's getting into this as uh, the third mm -hmm. chapter of his life. And right. uh, uh, since he is new, tell us a little bit about what he needed to have in place to uh, become a franchisee, what he can expect. Uh, you know, where he's at right now in his path. How mm -hmm. long has he been with you? He's, he's been with us for a few years now. Okay. Um, he's in South, uh, South Jersey. Um, he's had uh, a couple different careers, and uh, he reached out to us. He saw that we were unique um, and novel. Uh, he loved the fact that it was also home-based, um, and he loved the fact that we would be driving leads uh, to him. Um, so things that were compelling to him, um, he heard about our training. Uh, we have very intensive training. Um, myself and my partner remain your coach and mentor, uh, to make sure you're successful. So he really enjoyed the, you know, the support that he was going to get, uh, and continues to get to this day. Um, and he was just compelled. Um, he, he saw it in his own marketplace, um, the frustration that people had over it. He looked at his own home himself, similar to you. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Chris McDermott. Uh, he is a relatively new uh, franchise. He's actually been with us for a year and a half. Uh, Chris, I just want to ask you uh, a few quick questions. Uh, we like to do this after a period of time because we want to understand, um, you know, how you're doing. Sure. And we really want to know your feedback on, on your training that you got, uh, the support that you got, 
um, because we want to make sure our franchises are, are getting what they what they signed up for. Sure. Uh, quite frankly, yeah, uh, I actually was doing uh, due diligence on a competitor okay. um, because the, one of the competitors in my area was for sale. And, okay. Uh, after learning more about the industry, I went out and looked through all the other folks in the in the uh, you know similar business. Mm -hmm. um, some of the prime serve route and just above and beyond. From a training perspective, professionalism, and the entire business model was, was light years above everybody else. With Chris, what kind of capitalization did he really realistically need in place to mm -hmm. get him from zero to a point where he was actually making an yeah. income? Yeah. Um, well, our, our, all of our franchise costs uh, come in at less than 100000 uh, probably 75000 on average, mm -hmm. uh, all, all in for the franchise. That includes your vehicle, your equipment, and all your supplies. Um, most of our franchises are, are past break even you know, within the first year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's generally, that's not a problem. Um, I would say our, our median... Uh, revenue franchise is about 350000 uh, these days. I'm working on item 19 and our, and our FDD right now. Yeah. Um, our biggest location in Chicago uh, did a million two last year. Okay. So there's quite a, quite a range. Um, it's all up to the individual how hard they want to work or how hard they, you know, they don't want to work. Um, Chris McDermott, he's a hard driver. He's doing well. Um, we're really proud of him, and uh, he's got a good team. He's got a good team underneath. Now, one thing that really caught my attention is you've got a, a, a business scheduling call center. Uh, That's where, right. Where most companies tell their franchisees, uh, well, you're going to buy a business, and we're going to show you how to run it, and then you're going to go bring up right. the leads yourself. You actually do advertising, drive leads to a call center. These, these, these call centers schedule the franchisees appointments for them. Tell me a little bit about that. So uh, one of our, our primary goals is what I describe as first time resolution. Um, when a customer calls, we want he or she to get a live person and we want them to be um, spoken to, be, you know, the phone picked up before the third ring. So to your point, we, we actually don't allow any of our franchises to take their own phone calls. We have our own call center uh, we want to answer them live. Um, last year we had over 30,000 phone calls and we answered 96% of them before the third ring. So mm -hmm. we don't want to miss any opportunities. Uh, our franchises, um, are out in the field. Um, so we collect all of the warm leads for them, uh, where we document them and we put them on our, uh, on our software. So they just log in each morning and there's our schedule. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's outstanding. Uh, there are very, very few companies that uh, take it to that level. Now, when these uh, franchisees go out and make these calls and they're bidding on these jobs, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of close ratio can they expect? Mm -hmm. Our average close rate is 50%. Uh, our, our highest is 73%. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, the issue that people have, uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's ubiquitous. Um, and usually when we go on a sales call, Dan, um, the customer has already tried everything. They've tried all their household cleaning chemicals. They've already gone to Home Depot or Lowe's and tried, you know, other, uh, uh, ways to try to clean and spruce up their grout, all unsuccessful. So our leads are truly very motivated. Um, we just need to answer their call live. We need to show up on time. We have a very uh, prescript um, uh, presentation that we give, which includes samples, uh, a whole host of before and after photos. Um, so th these, are, these are warm um, uh, clients that are, are, are really anxious to get this done. And I, I might add, we grew our fastest through the recession. We, we started this business in 2007. Yeah. Uh, so my point is people have not pushed off wanting to look and feel clean. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got some properties down here in Florida that uh, I need you to have a franchisee down here because mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. down here is a tile floor. And That's when, right. when you have an income property, and you're showing it because you've the old tenants moved out and you're, you're trying to clean it up and get it ready mm -hmm. for, for showing. You want it to look as new and fresh as possible. And when, right. when you have that 
those dirty grout uh, seams as they're walking into the, the living room, it just puts a pail over the entire experience. Whereas yeah. when you walk in and, and it's, it's gleaming, it looks like it's brand new tile. Mm -hmm. It has a huge impact. Uh, yeah. So I can I I mean I can see all kinds of uses that I would use of yours. Uh, the other one that uh, that really caught my attention was this uh, restyle your tile thing that you guys mm -hmm. just came out with. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, we um, can take a uh, shower, for example, that maybe it's an old shower, maybe 60s, 70s, uh, four inch tile, for example. And we can actually tile right over your existing tile. Yeah, uh, It's a very thin tile. It's about the width of two dimes. And we can tile right over your tile without any remodeling. We don't have to knock your existing shower down. We can actually just tile right over the top of it. I think it's amazing. I mean, any of us that have, has gone through that experience, uh, whether we've done it with our own houses or we've done it with uh, our income properties or whatever, mm -hmm. the idea that you can, you can go in and, and – put basically a, a clean veneer over the existing surface mm -hmm. without having to demo that is just right. outstanding. What kind of savings can you expect with that? Oh, um, it can be as much as half mm -hmm. um, as a remodel, um, but more importantly to our customers, they tell us they love the fact that we can get it done in a day. Yeah. Most of, most of the remodels take you know four or five days, and you have all the mess and, and dust and inconvenience associated with it. So, the reality of it with our customers, most of the time, it's not price related; it's it's convenience. Mm -hmm. um, right. Of course, style as well. And Do you have a guy in Chicago, I think, whose name is Dan? I can't recall his last name. Yes, Dan Lundstedt. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and he seems to be doing pretty well. I think he has four territories. Is that right? He has he has four territories. He had two, and then uh, the beginning of last year, he decided to buy two more. Mm -hmm. uh, we're quite proud, Dan. Most of our owners go on to buy a second territory. Uh, they validate the model uh, initially, and then they. They snoop around uh, geography outside their initial territory, and they go on to buy a second. Dan decided to to basically take the entire city of Chicago. So, what is a territory? Is it uh, is it geographically bound? Is it po by population yes. base? Yes, our minimum territory is, equals one hundred and seventy five thousand okay. um, single family homes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it doesn't include you know apartment buildings, but single family homes. I uh, would say anywhere from the minimum is one seventy five, but some of our territories uh, go up to as much as two hundred and fifty thousand uh, single family homes. Okay, so, and then of course that in, in that contiguous uh, piece of geography is is commercial as well. I watched your uh, your franchising videos where you have uh, a number of your franchisees who are doing testimonials with you. And mm -hmm. all of them obviously speak very highly of you and the and the program and all of that. They really like that they're that they're a franchise. They like being in this in this business. So they're well situated. Who is not a good candidate for this kind of franchise? Um, we always tell people um, if you're not willing to follow a recipe, if you're not willing to follow a set of processes, uh, you're so fiercely independent. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't want to follow anything, right. that, that's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I, I say to people often, when you buy a franchise, um, you're in business for yourself, uh, but not by yourself. Right. So you have to be willing to be coached. Um, you know, some people come in and say, oh, I, I'll figure this out. I'll just do this myself. <laughs> you know, I, I get it. Uh, but you know, we're, that's what we're here for. We're, we're here to make you successful so you don't make the same mistakes, um, you know, that, of course, we did in our early days. Right. So you have to be willing to participate, um, you know, in our, in our recipe. And if you follow our recipe, you get cake at the end. What, uh, ab what about personality style as far as dealing with the, with the customer? And, uh, you know, some people are well suited to be that, uh, that guy who's basically taking orders over the Internet and isn't really interacting with people at all. Right. And this, right. this seems to be very, very people based. You need to be able to go into someone's home. You need to be able to talk to them comfortably about whatever's going on with their particular situation. You need to be able to make a presentation to them that is, uh, is comfortable and makes sense to them. Yeah. I, you know, there are a lot of people, uh, you know, that don't like to get up and speak in front of large audiences. Mm -hmm. Um, there's that fear. Most of the people that we have are not intimidated having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yes, you do have to feel comfortable walking up and ringing the doorbell and, and meeting a complete stranger. Um, it's not that difficult though, because man, are they happy to see you? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're, we're, you know, Sir Grout to the rescue. So people are, uh, this is not a, this is not an insurance sales call. Um, this is not a hard sell. Well, I think that, I think, uh, as someone who comes from the sales background, uh, for years where I had to go out and generate my own leads, your call center and your lead generation system is outstanding. I think it's one of the, the biggest assets of this business, uh, specifically. And, uh, mm-hmm. so I think you've got uh, just a winning formula. I, I think, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, with the, that home improvement space just exploding, you're going to be right on top of that. So, can I have? Uh, can I tell you one more piece of news, Dan? Sure. Uh, that I didn't mention in the beginning. Uh, the Entrepreneur Magazine uh, comes out every Jan, February, with uh, the the top 500 franchises. And we were on that list again. And to your point, we were now we are now listed within the top twenty five home improvement uh, franchises. Ah, outstanding! So we're, we're we're delighted to be um, you know in that in that company. Congratulations on that! I make sure that. I got that in. <laughs> That's outstanding, <laughs> Tom. I want to I want to thank you for joining me today. I think this was a, a great conversation. We're going to be right. uh, putting your information, your website, and your phone number, and so forth, okay. in our notes, so people can uh, contact you directly. Okay. And again, I want to thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it, Dan. All thank right. you very much. Right. Thanks for joining us on this episode. I hope that you found it informative. Uh, please uh, check out the notes section for more links and relevant information. And if you like what you've seen, please make sure that you uh, like us on Facebook and also subscribe so that you're up to date on a weekly basis of what we're doing. Thanks again. Hope to see you next week.